Hello physics students. Today we're going to work on a problem that uses the inclined plane from before but also is going to incorporate some ideas of power and efficiency. In the problem description we're told that we have this 250 kilogram box that's being pulled up at a constant velocity on this inclined plane of this 12 degree angle. We want to know or we want to learn this velocity. How quickly can the thing be pulled given that there are only particular capabilities here. We see over here that the wattage of this motor is 600 and the efficiency is 60 percent. And so we will be able to use this idea that's up here. Wattage, remember, is an indicator that you're dealing with powers, not the work that's up here. So make sure you understand that W is a unit as opposed to a variable. If you read the description carefully, you can see that you have this idea where here's an outlet, and from the outlet, you send some power into this motor, this winch. And so that is the PI, the power into the thing. And then from there, the motor will deliver some sort of power that comes out of it. And I can tell you from the beginning that we're not particularly interested in using this 600 number for anything other than to find out how much power we can actually get out of the winch here. So let's, in the corner, let's go ahead and just figure out what we're actually dealing with, the amount of power available to pull this box. I'm going to rewrite that 60% in a ratio form so that the mathematics will work. I'm going to say 0.6 is going to be equal to the power out is what I really want to know. What's going to actually pull on that line that pulls the box up when the power that's going into the thing is 600 watts. And so the power that comes out is going to be equal to 360 watts. And so that's my usable power to pull on the box. From there, we don't actually have to do a whole lot to figure this out. If you come look at our equations that are going to describe power, I'm not really particularly interested in this one in this particular strategy. This one is going to be much more useful. If I could learn that power, then I could solve for the velocity that I can pull this thing up. And what I really need to know, how much force is needed to pull. I want you to also recognize that the force, the direction of that force is going to be a tension that's pointing up in that direction. And the direction of motion is also pointing up in that direction. And so that is really nice for us. That makes this dot product, that scalar product, really simple. As long as I can learn how to describe this force in that direction that's parallel to the velocity. So you'll recall the way that we go about doing that is we use our ideas from the inclined plane. So I have a 250 kilogram block. And on that block, there's going to be an FG that points straight down. That FG is going to be equal to mass times gravity. So that is 250 times 9.8. So I'll write it up here in red, 2450 newtons. That is that downward pull on that box from gravity. And you will recall the way that we want to actually do these problems is we adjust our coordinate system. Instead of horizontal and vertical for our coordinate system, what we do is we change it so that we're either parallel to the plane, that's this one, or we're perpendicular to the plane. The benefit is that there's going to be a normal force, an Fn, that pushes up on this box. And it is going to be in this direction. It's going to be perpendicular to the plane. The motion is in this direction. It's parallel to the plane. So it's actually much simpler for us to do that. So what I have to do is I have to describe that weight vector, this 2,450 newtons, in terms of two components. Here's a component that is pushing into the plane, and here's a component that's pushing down the plane. That's a right angle right here, and this is actually a 12 degree angle up there. Remember, you can do a little simple trig to figure that out. If I just drew a line that's straight down, and then this blue line is actually perpendicular to that surface there, then I know this amount of angle has to be 90 degrees, and then if you come think about the triangle for a second, you know that this, the small angle in here is 12. You need to have the balance of that in that corner. So that'd be 78 degrees because of how the triangle works. But then I know that 78 degrees here for this quantity plus some unknown must equal my 90. And it's that 12 again. So that's, recall how we figure out that interior 12 there. 
Okay, let's go ahead and figure out my components since I'm going to need them. This is the adjacent side, so it's going to be the cosine function that describes it. So there's the hypotenuse times cosine of 12 degrees. This side is equal to 2, 3, 9, 6. Then down here, the opposite side, this is going to be described by the sine function. So I have sine of 12 there. This is 500 and nine newtons. From there, I can do a quick logic argument. This Fn that I spoke of before, remember there is no acceleration in this dimension. So I know that the net force must be zero in that dimension. The only other thing I have is this Fn that's sitting up there, and that's gonna perfectly balance out this force. So the Fn is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction, to the component of the weight that's pushing into the plane, which was, again, that one. That number is really important for me to know. There are actually two forces on this box that that rope has to actually fight against. So if I come down here and redraw that box for a second, there is this force, which is the 509 newtons that's right here, and then there is a friction force right there that this rope this FT has to actually pull against. And don't forget the way that I figure out my friction is by using the coefficient in the FN. And so there's my FN over here. So I'm going to switch to red real quick so that it's easier to keep straight. And I will say my kinetic friction is going to be equal to mu K, which was 0 0.35 unitless number, times 2396 newtons. So the friction that I have associated with this problem is going to be 839, that's a rounded number, newtons. So down here, this is 839 newtons. I'm going to clear some board space here. So now my job is to figure out what the tension is. Remember, the reason why we're doing that is that tension, that's the applied force that's actually acting up this rope that I want to use so that I can find this velocity there. I know that the F net in this direction, in this parallel to the plane direction, is going to be equal to zero. And I know that because it's going to move at a constant velocity. That's kind of implied in this problem. I wrote the problem. Maybe I should have written it in there. But what constant velocity will that crate be able to move? So F net has to be equal to zero. There's no acceleration. So zero is going to be equal to the friction plus the Fg comma down. That's what I frequently call this one. Fg comma down, down the plane, plus the tension. I'm going to go ahead and make this the positive direction for the purposes of this calculation. So I'm going to have zero is equal to negative 839 newtons minus 509 newtons plus the Ft. This Ft is going to be equal to 1348. And I'm still using those rounded numbers, so I might have a little compounding rounding error going on. But so there's that tension. So I have all the pieces I now need to finish this problem. So now I come down here. Remember, this was the power that you could functionally get out of this winch. So that is going to be the P from right there, 360 watts. A watt is a good unit to be in when I'm in kilograms. Newton seconds, all of those things. So I'm going to have unit agreement. The force is from that tension. It's 1348 newtons. And then I have a V sitting here, which is my question mark. And again, I'll remind you that the force and the velocity are now in the same direction. And so my dot product is just going to be the multiplication of the two magnitudes of these vectors here. So that means V is going to be equal to 360 watts divided by 1348 newtons. And my V is 0 0.267 meters per second. I need to be in the base units there because these derived units are made up of things in the base units, kilograms, meters, and seconds. Great, there's my final answer, and hopefully that made sense to you. And if it did, you should let your computer know.